Right then, you lovely lot. Uh, big day today. <laughs> so, <laughs> You're so excited. I am so excited. Um, Guess what he's gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna try avoiding going to Ireland today, <laughs> or the Isle of Man. Um, so something I've always fancied doing, you less so, I think, uh, is the Ribble Link. And uh, today, today, hopefully we get to, or I get to do it. <laughs> it's funny, you're smiling because you're doing it. I'm smiling because I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so at the good grace of a really, really nice chap called Gerald, who calls himself Billy, uh, we, uh, oh yeah, hopefully getting to do the Ribble Link today. So. Uh, regular watchers of our channel, our other channel, Explore the UK, hopefully will have seen the video that we did of the Lancaster Canal. And about 200 years ago, they built, uh, they started the canal up at Lancaster and they built a little arm off the Leeds and Liverpool down at uh, Johnson's Hillock Locks near Whitley Woods and they never connected the two pieces of water so there was a tram road uh, that uh, connected the two pieces of water. Wind the clock on 200 years and there now is a piece of water that connects the Leeds Liverpool with the Lancaster Canal but it's not where it was originally intended. To get from the Lancaster to the Leeds Liverpool means crossing the River Ribble and you think oh it's a river it's properly, properly tidal. It's one of the strongest tides. I think it's the third strongest tide in the UK, something like that. So you can only go on it at certain times. It's a, it's a sort of managed passage, so the CRT needs to let you through. And yeah, you've got to watch the tide time. So basically you're told where you need to be and when and when you can go. Were you to go tomorrow, but for some reason that passage got cancelled so it got moved forward to today so uh diary got cleared <laughs> it didn't really matter what was in there today <laughs> it, it was getting cleared and yeah it was all about uh yeah all about today so i'm i'm just dead excited just dead excited so Right, just while we wait for all the boats to arrive and get together, this video is about the experience of doing the link and crossing the link. If you've got a thirst for knowledge and you want some real detail, we've done a video, we've done a how-to guide on how to cross the Ribble Link. Go and have a look at that because it gets into all the nitty-gritty about how you prepare yourself and your boat and all the various elements that make up the link. So, well worth a watch as well. So from what we've seen, it looks pretty tight actually, the, uh, the, the Ribble link, the, the, the sort of bit before we get to the River Ribble. So I don't know whether we're going to end up going into these, uh, the locks behind us, the staircase lock backwards actually, because there's a really, really sharp corner at the, it's almost 180 degrees at the end of the staircase lock. So we might end up going backwards, not quite sure yet. Right, we're ready for off, the CRT are here. And uh, yeah, so we've got nine locks to get through today. We've got, uh, what have we got? We've got seven canal locks, so seven normal locks, although there's three in a staircase here. Then we've got uh, one river lock and one sea lock. So I'm assuming the sea lock's gonna be pretty, uh, pretty big. So the CRT are here to help. We've got a um, couple of boats with us. So that should hopefully make uh, fairly short, uh, short, work of, um, short work of the locks. And then, uh, yeah, then we're off. So just before we get going, a massive thank you to Barbara and Martin Wilson for the coffees that you bought us. That's very generous, guys. Thank you for that. And of course, to our continued supporters, our Patreons, you all help keep the channel going and make this thing possible. So we love you all. Let me introduce you to Raggedy Ann. She's a 40-foot black country cruiser from 2002 and I've been living on her for just over three years now. <laughs> I obviously drive better in the dark. <laughs> and backwards. <laughs> and backwards. <laughs> now, going in the lot backwards with a small she audience goes. puts you under pressure. Well, I got lucky this morning. There was very little wind up here. And everything went to plan. And boat number two is coming in now.
like the host of the month. Great stuff. So the CRT guys are here. They're going to help us through the staircase lock because this is a partially assisted passage. The reason we went in the lock backwards <laughs> is this. Look at that. So that's the way we've got to go for our onward journey. And there is no way you went down here forwards to be able to wind your boat here. As Gerald says, it's really shallow in the edges as well. So even if from a length point of view you could, it's very shallow. So we've come down backwards. We can go there for it. Adios, amigo! <laughs> See you on the dark side of the moon! See you on the dark side! <laughs> See you in a bit! Oh, it's quite twisty then. Oh, yeah, you'll yeah, see it twisty in a minute. Wow, is it? Your aerial's touch and go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, is that what it is? Right. The whole thing's going good. Didn't we just do things properly back in the Victor Victorian age? I mean, look at the look at that bridge and the the, the, the actual journey on that canal system in the UK. Certainly, is uh, you're walking in history. Yeah. The infrastructure, it is, you know, some of the lock windings and infrastructure is, is as it was two two hundred plus 200 years, years ago. ago. Yeah. And it's a privilege to be able to do that. Yeah. It's got a different feel to it, this. It, it sort of feels like, I don't know, it doesn't almost doesn't feel like canal. So we've fallen lucky here. It looks like the guys from the CRT are going to see us through the lot. Top work, guys. So that's our onward journey when we come out of the lock. You can see there's quite a bit of water coming through the biowash here, so we have to watch that as we, uh, as we exit the lock. It just feels weird. It doesn't feel like a canal at all. It's, it feels like you're sort of driving through a bit of a stream. like that. Oh, there's a good few footballs in there. Don't think I'll be adding to my collection today though. Right, so regular watchers of the channel will know that we're always doing KF watch. Well, first one was here today, first one of the year. We'll see if we can get him to fly again, but uh, yeah, KF number one of 2024. That's a big old weir you don't want to try going down there. The guys are here to help us already. It's super efficient, these guys, and we're all over it. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> God, it's 
twisty and uh, well, it's narrow here. Look at this. I did read somewhere that you can get 10 foot wide beams down here, but I'm not sure if it doesn't look like yeah, that, does it? It just looks like it gets so uh, shallow at the edges as well. Yeah. So the width might work, but... Um, other than the drones, Google Pixel 7 Pro. Is it really? Very pleasing. Very pleasing. Until it ends up in the drink or it goes on the blink, it's, uh, it's what I'm using and that sort of... Uh, it really is a privilege to be able to do this journey from one canal section to another. It's an opportunity, an adventure that really shouldn't be missed. Some golfing going on today, what what? How many balls have you lost today? Be honest. Not too bad actually, we've been alright. <laughs> Go on, what's alright then? Let's have a number. Yeah, yeah, Let's have a number. <laughs> Good luck. Oh my word, look how sharp this is. I suppose at least you know nothing's coming the other way, don't you? But, uh... That's true. So I don't know if you've mentioned it, but uh, Gerald's boat is 40 foot long, so quite manoeuvrable, just as well. To CRT guys, cycling ahead. I think the guy on the bike behind needs a slightly bigger bike. Come on CRT, get him a bigger bike. This journey doesn't only build confidence and give you a great deal of achievement, it puts you onto the Lancaster Canal, which gives you 40 miles of lovely cruising and takes you up towards the southern end of the Lake District. I hope this video will help you make decisions and the right preparations to take this journey on. I'm kind of thinking this must be like going down the Amazon. Not that I've ever been down the Amazon. The water level here is rising all the time, so as the tide's coming in on the river section, the tide, the water level on the link on Savick Brook is also rising. So these sort of mud banks at the side in due course will be submersed. It's not an easy section to navigate this. I've got to say, Gerald's doing a superb job of keeping us off the banks and out of all the uh, all the various bits of rock etc so we've made pretty good time actually so around this corner is a floating pontoon that we're going to be waiting on whilst the river level the tide level rises 
uh, to let us out. But in the meanwhile, we've just got to watch this bridge because the water level on Savick Brook is rising all the time. We're going to be a bit squeaky for air draft. We're going to be a bit squeaky for headroom. So the CRT guys have just shouted over to say that we're likely to be here for about an hour waiting for the tide to rise. So good chance to get down the weed hatch and just check that Raggedy Ann, before getting out onto the river, has the clear, uh, cleanest prop that she possibly can. <laughs> That's all good. Good, good. Captain's happy? Yep. Right, it's 12.59. We're waiting uh, nervously for the uh, CRT to shout us and chap keeps popping out up here and just sort of waving to say a few minutes yet, a few minutes yet, so a couple of minutes we should be off. Thank you. See you out there. Yeah, <laughs> This is good. Uh, Are you good? Alright, engine's on. The mile crash first. 12 minutes past. So as you can see, sea locks, not really a lock as such, more a sort of big gate stroke underwater obstruction really. So we've been waiting for the river level to rise and rise and rise, and basically give us enough uh, water draft to get over the underwater obstruction. But we're still not out on the river riddle just yet. Right, so for context, we are, how far would you say, Gerald, from the entrance or uh, exit? About 300 yards. About 300 yards. It's got considerably blusterier, if that's a word, uh, and it's got quite a bit colder. We've dropped a few degrees and there's almost a sort of sea type smell in the air. So you can tell you're somewhere different. And I said earlier when we were going through the sort of Savick Brook area, that it felt different to a canal. Well, this feels very different to a canal. This is starting to feel a little bit sort of Irish ferry, uh, P&O ferry type, uh, but it's cool. I mean, the fact you can be in this sort of environment, in this place, in this day and age with all our sort of health and safety, no one's allowed to, even potentially harm themselves is a real privilege so this is cool and we know it's got a bit blustery because gerald swapped his uh australian uh hat his australian cowboy hat for a woolly one so oh right this is it this is the oh my gosh look at the water passing oh wow so you've just got to be a bit careful when you get to this point not to cut the corner. The temptation because the water's flowing from our starboard to our port side is to sort of cut the corner um, to sort of fight and get the boat set, set up against the water flow. But you can actually get yourself beached here on this corner, hence the red posts. So there's a balance to be found. I'm just going to call the time in a sec. Oh, wow. Gosh, how cool is that? Right. What are we saying? Are we saying we're entering the river now? 1325. Oh my gosh, look how wide it is. There's a sprawling metropolis that is Preston. 
for those of you that watch our other channel, Explore the UK, you can just see the spire there of uh, St. Wilbert's Church. There is something to like just to our star there. Yeah. It's about this time that you remember that you're only allowed out onto the River Ribble when the tide is around 9 metres, so it's around 10 times the depth of the normal canal. There we go, 1.9 knots. Oh my word, look at all the geese. We're lucky that Raggedy Ann has a 30 horsepower engine powering just a 40 foot boat so she's got plenty of torque, plenty of punch. So pushing through the tide and the headwind isn't as much of a challenge as it would be on a lesser powered boat. Seeing the uh, light glistening off the the waves, isn't yeah. it? Like those dual light. They're just open skies for miles. It's getting windy. You do have to watch out for debris actually, uh, Joe mentioned it earlier, but look, there's a massive pipe in the middle of, in the, middle of the river. Not easy to see. Not the sort of thing you necessarily want to have to contend with, so... So Gerald's just pointing out the fact that as tempting as it is, that's the River Douglas entrance that we want, as tempting as it is to cut the corner here, because you sort of think, well, it's really deep, why can't I just go over there? The buoy that we do and should turn at is actually this one up here. So it, it feels counterintuitive to carry on so much further to turn left, but to take this route here would be to cut the corner. We obviously want to stay in the deepest part for as long as we can. You see the water on the bow of the boat now, it's really... Yeah, we've got some waves going on. So that's, gosh, that's where the guys have gone. If I stand 90 degrees onto the boat, that's here. 
left-hand right. That's where you turn. It feels wrong, doesn't it? Yeah, it <laughs> does feel wrong. Exactly. It's very easy to do. It's like I want to go. I want to go over here. <laughs> There's, there's our turning point. There's the boat behind us. So that's taken us just an hour and five minutes to cover the three and a half miles on the River Ribble. Pretty good going with a headwind and a tide against us. It looks really weird. The water's moving from sort of right to left, but the boat's not moving in the direction you'd expect. I don't know how to explain that, but that, that looks bizarre. So we're just coming up now to the uh, to the locks. The River Douglas will carry on to the left-hand side, and we're going to take the lock on our starboard side. Just trying to work out what's happening ahead. Whether the I think the guys have seen us, but uh, the GRP cruiser was ahead, so they're probably just dealing with that, and then hopefully getting it ready for ourselves. And the other boats caught us up quite nicely. So we'll both use the lock at the same time. This is the curse of the penny wart. So after a tiring crossing, it's a shame that there's so much penny wart in the lock. And yeah, it's, uh, it's difficult to even get in the lock, particularly difficult for the boat that's following behind us. But Raggedy Ann's stuck on the weed. There's not much we can do to move the boat from where it is now. But at least once out of this lock, we'll be on to calmer waters, and it's the rougher branch of the Leeds and Liverpool Canal. We're coming into land. Look at that. Wow, <laughs> what a day, what an experience. Uh, I said it before, if you want to know the detail about the crossing and the nitty gritty, go and watch our how to guide, how to cross the Ribble link guide video. But yeah, to actually experience the link and the crossing, absolutely superb, shattered, but um, thrilled. And it wouldn't have been possible without Gerald. What an absolute superstar to invite me along and, um, you know, let's get the cameras out and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, what what an absolute diamond of a gent so big thumbs up thank you very much gerald